Hello everyone and welcome back to our third weekly video regarding our second unit that is animal allies. In that unit we're going to focus on the concept of connections of the question that is what are some examples of animals serving as therapy or emotional support for humans and how do these relationships benefit people? As we're going to move on to the unit, we're going to go through the introduction of your unit brief introduction, and then we're going to move on to the primary goals that basically this um, unit highlights accordingly. And then we're going to move on to our essential question uh, that relates to our SOI, ending up with basically a summary of the tests that we're going to uh, basically highlight in a week. And the concept again of connections and human dignity is going to be highlighted through uh, several essential questions that we will have uh, throughout the unit itself through the informational and literal texts that we have. Uh, like, for example, how has the role of animals as work partners evolved over time from horses and agriculture to serve as dogs for individuals uh, with disabilities? What is the concept of animal assisted therapy and what are the potential benefits of incorporating animals into therapeutic settings? And how do humans depend on animals for food and other resources? And what are the ethical considerations surrounding these relationships? Now, whenever we think about denotation and connotation, we're thinking about two integral aspects of word meaning in language. So denotation refers to the precise literal definition of a word, while connotation encompasses the emotional, cultural, and secondary associations that a word carry. So again, in this lesson, we're going to comprehend the distinction between both of these aspects as literal or um, subjective kind of associations. And we're going to recognize how word choice impacts the overall message, tone, mood, and imagery in literature and we're going to apply it eventually um, both of them apply the awareness to enhance the communication and our writing now we're going to develop a deeper understanding of the main ideas and share thoughts through spoken and written practices and we're going to explore at the end the background of the author in alignment with the type of the text and last we're going to make personal inferences in regard to the essential question that we have um, that relates to my life with the chimpanzee so again, it is an autobiographical work uh, that is known by Jane Goddell, and uh, she tried to share again in her book um, her experiences and observations from uh, basically a grand, um, you know, breaking research about animals. Generally, when she talks about chimpanzees, and again, the book provides a fascinating insight uh, into her own life and work and her close even interactions with animals in the wild. Um, moving again to uh, our author of the book itself, or the text that we're dealing with, that is Jane. So she's a, basically a very well-known uh, anthropologist. She's uh, been doing extensive and groundbreaking research on chimpanzees. And again, she tried to begin most of her work in the 1960s. She revolutionized our understanding of the primates, of uh, their behavior of animals in the wild. And again, her research revealed the complex social and emotional lives of uh, chimpanzees and challenged previously held beliefs about distinctions between humans and even animals. So she co contributed to the field of uh, primatology and conservation that had earned her numerous awards and honors at the same time. She's a founder uh, who dedicated uh, her life to wildlife research, conservation, and even education. And we're going again to be done with the very challenging question that is, how did Jane again early interactions with animals such as her dog Rusty uh, influence her fascinations with wildlife and her eventual career path? And now, um, accordingly, to move on and learn more about the author herself, we're going to uh, mention a lot of facts when it comes to her life and influential works. And at the same time, we're going to move on to concept of vocabulary words. We're going to define them um, when it comes to context. So we're going to read the text and we're going to look for these words in context um, and share our understanding through written and spoken practices. Last, we're going to um, read and annotate the author's words. So we're going to ask ourselves a lot of questions. So what are the key ethical considerations surrounding long-term field studies of primates like chimpanzees and described in the book? We're going to think a lot about the author's choice of words and repetition, concept vocabulary of a lot of words in regard to her text. Again, we're going to find words um, of her choice that relate to human dignity, that are related to our essential question. And we're going to answer at the end the challenging question that is, how did Jane Again, work influence uh, conservation efforts of protection of chimpanzees in the wild, 
and what are the current threats to uh, their survival. So eventually we're going to conclude a summary of the text itself after being done with the reading, whether it be uh, reading for just or details. We're going to emphasize the lasting impact of Jane's work on the fields of hematology, conservation, and even animal rights.